Hi, my name is Dr. Jay Desai. I welcome you all to this fourth video on non-destructive testing. Today, I will be talking about magnetic particle testing. Magnetic particle testing or magnetic particle inspection or magnetic flux leakage, all are one and same. Here, what we do is we take the help of magnetism to detect defects. Now, since we are taking the help of magnetism, we can only detect defects present in a uh, material which can be magnetized. And that is why only ferromagnetic materials can be inspected using this technique. And also we can only detect surface and subsurface discontinuities. We cannot detect any other kind of discontinuities using magnetic particle testing. The basic of magnetism goes back to hysteresis loop. Suppose you have a component which is not subjected to any kind of magnetizing force. So initially the magnetic domains in it will be randomly oriented. Now, if you provide a magnetizing force, then what will happen is all these magnetic dipoles will start aligning itself towards the magnetizing force. And there comes a point called saturation point where all the magnetic dipoles are aligned in one direction. Okay. Now, if you remove the magnetizing force, what will happen is it will not retrace its original path and come back to zero. The magnetic dipoles, some of the magnetic dipoles will still be oriented. And that is why we will have some magnetization even when magnetizing force is zero. And this point is called retentivity or residual magnetization. If you want to completely remove any magnetizing effect or if you want completely random magnetizing domain, then we have to produce, we have to give the reverse magnetizing force and this, there will be a point where all the magnetic dipoles will be in a random direction. And this point is called coercivity. And this phenomena can go back to the reverse also. In reverse, we will have the saturation but in opposite direction. This is the basic idea behind magnetism. And once we achieve this magnetization, this magnetic material will behave as a ferromagnetic material, right? And this ferromagnetic material will have magnetic field of its own. This magnetic field is nothing but the imaginary line starting from north pole to south pole. If anything magnetic comes in the field, then it will be attracted by the ferromagnetic material. How we can use it for uh, magnetic particle testing? So initially, when your component does not have any cracks or discontinuities, then the lines will be like this, straight. But if there is a crack or if there is a discontinuity, then the direction of the magnetic field will be slightly altered or the direction of the magnetic field will be changing. And this will create a leakage field. Now, if you apply the magnetic particles over here, these particles will align or it will uh, be focused over this area where there is a crack and we will be able to see the defects. This is how we can use magnetization for defect analysis. So the basic principle behind magnetic particle testing is that uh, when we magnetize a component or a part, the discontinuities will cause a leakage field and if you apply the magnetic particles, we can apply the magnetic particles either in dry form or in the suspension form. So once these magnetic particles are applied, they will form an outline around the discontinuity and we will be able to see it's the um, location, size, shape and extent of surface and subsurface discontinuities. Now, this, that was the basic principle behind magnetic particle testing. But how do non-destructive non testing engineers or NDT engineers use it in real practical situations? So what we do is uh, there are six steps which are involved in magnetic particle testing. First is surface cleaning. Second is magnetization. Third is checking whether the strength of magnetic field is good or not. And we do it with the help of field indicators. Then we apply the magnetic media, then we inspect the component, and then we demagnetize the component. So these are six basic steps which are 
involved in MPT and almost all NDE engineers follow the same steps. So step one is surface cleaning. Surface cleaning is very important because we want the surface to be clean so that there are no contaminants like oil, grease and other uh, impurities and it may affect our results adversely. And also when we apply the particles, the magnetic particles, we want them to flow freely to the surface. And if we want the particles to move freely on the surface, we want the surface to be clean. And that is the importance of surface cleaning. So after we clean the surface, the step two is magnetization or application of magnetizing force. So here what we do is we apply magnetizing force and we either uh, uh, go till here saturation point or we uh, use as a residual magnetization. So in both case we can use uh, for inspection we can uh, magnetize the component till here or we can magnetize the component till here. Both uh, is good for testing. Now the magnetizing methods can be of two types contact methods and non-contact methods. Contact methods where the magnetic current directly flows to the part and non-contact methods where we can use solenoids, coils and other things to induce magnetic current in the part. This, uh, there is a rule called right hand thumb rule which we have studied in uh, the school days that if the thumb is pointing towards the current then the fingers will be in the direction of magnetic field. So we will be able to figure out the direction of magnetic field if uh, the current is passing through the component using right hand thumb rule. But which current we should pass? I, we should go for AC current or we should go for DC current. So if we want skin effect, like we want to detect uh, the discontinuities on surface, then we have to go for the AC current. And if we want to analyze the subsurface defects, then DC current is recommended because DC can penetrate in the, in the entire cross section. So if we want to analyze surface defects, AC is good. If we want to analyze subsurface defect, then DC is good. Then comes the magnetization methods. The step two was magnetization. We want to magnetize the component. But how can we magnetize a component? We can magnetize the component in four different ways. One is connecting the test specimen with electrodes. You, by, uh, second is by using probes. Third is by using induced fields. And fourth is by using yokes, which is nothing but a U-shaped electromagnet. So the first one is connecting test specimens to electrodes. So suppose this is your fixed electrode and this is the electrode which you can move in the left and right direction and this is a test specimen. So if this is the direction of current then the magnetic field will be along this direction. And in this way we can uh, magnetize the test specimen by directly connecting it between two electrodes. So this is the contact method of magnetization. Second Second method is by using prods. Prods or electrodes, we can use these prods which are nothing but electrodes and these electrodes are connected to power source and uh, current is transferred from here and it is removed from here and we can uh, magnetize this component using prods. So this is another way by of which we can magnetize a component. The third one is using induced field, for example, through central conductor. So suppose uh, this is your part which is hollow, we can insert the central conductor, the current is passed through the central conductor and uh, if the size of the central conductor is too small, then we place it at the wall of the hollow part which we want to inspect. So if the size of cylinder is large, the conductor is placed with the wall of the portion. If it is not that large, then we can put it at the center. So this is another way of magnetizing a sample. Then we can also magnetize using induced fields, for example solenoids. Here we get a longitudinal magnetic field, we do not get circular magnetic field. And then we can also use yoke, which is nothing but a U-shaped electromagnet to magnetize the part. When the switch is on, the magnetic field will be created and the component will be magnetized. So these are different methods by which we can magnetize a component. 
But how do we determine whether the magnetic field which we have created is good or not to magnetize the particular part? So for that, we use a reference which will indicate the strength of magnetizing field and these uh, references are called field indicators. So the step three is checking the strength of magnetic field using field indicators. Field indicators are nothing but they predict the level of magnetic field in a qualitative manner. By qualitative manner, I mean whether the field is good enough or it is not good enough to magnetize. Some of the field indicators are Keto's ring, pi gauge, uh, QQI or quantitative quality indicators and also there are other types of field indicators also which people can use. The first one is called Keto's ring which is nothing but a ring with a hole on the center and there are small holes along the periphery which are at different distances from the edge. So here you see the distance is small and here the distance is at largest. So this is, this is uh, what a Keto's ring look, looks like. So how we use Keto's ring? What we do is we put the central conductor in between here and we put the central conductor through hole and we pass the magnetizing current. Now when we pass the magnetizing current, the ring will magnetize. And now when we apply the magnetic particles, we will be able to see certain, certain amount of holes. So if the magnetic particles can uh, adhere to certain number of holes, then we can say that okay, our magnetic field strength is good enough. If it is not uh, visualizing or if we cannot, we do not get holes in a particular manner, then we say that uh, the field needs to be improved. The second one is called pi gauge. Pi gauge is nothing but uh, it is. It looks like a coin, which is made up of highly permeable material. By permeable, I mean uh, it is a measure of magnetization that uh, how much a magnetization a material can obtain when it is subjected to a magnetic field. And this pi gauge can indicate both the magnitude and direction of magnetic field. So what, what is done here is the we have perfectly uh, permeable material and we cut slots along the diagonals. These slots are cut and filled with non-magnetic materials and these non-magnetic materials will behave as artificial flaws and it will help you in detecting the uh, detects, uh, defects. And also there is a hinge and handle too for handling purposes. Now, how can we use pi gauge? So if we want to use pi gauge, what we do is we place the pi gauge as flat as possible on the test surface with the visible pi section, the pi sections which are visible, we face it at downward side and we magnetize the surface. If we magnetize the surface and then if we apply the magnetic particles, there will be indications. And these indications will tell us, okay, there, uh, there is an artificial flaw present over here, there is artificial flaw present over here, there is artificial flaw present over here. Or and similarly, wherever the artificial flaws are present, it will, it will guide us. And uh, it will tell you whether your magnetic field strength is good enough or not to magnetize your actual component. So this way we can use pi gauge for as a field indicator. Now, what if we have a very complex discontinuity? What if we need to magnetize in different directions, right? So in that case, we use a QQIs or we use other field indicators. So now we know that uh, we have cleaned our surface, we have uh, magnetized our surface and we have checked whether our field is good enough or not. So all is good. Now we can apply the magnetic media or magnetic particles. How we can apply the particles? We can apply the particles either in dry, dry form or in the wet particles. So dry particles may be coated with uh, colors like brown, red or yellow so that we can enhance the visibility of dry powders and wet particles. Usually here the particles are suspended in a solution or a, in a low viscosity liquid and this liquid will act as a carrier for particles and it will ensure uniform distribution of particles. 
So mostly wherever possible, we use wet particles and we avoid dry particles. But if it is a rough surface, then we can we have to go for dry particles. We cannot use uh, uh, wet particles in the rough surface because our results will not be good. And uh, in rough surfaces, uh, we go for dry particles. But uh, mostly we try to go with a wet suspension because uniformity of particles is more if we use wet suspension. There are different methods of particle application. One is continuous method, one is residual magnetization method, and one is testing method. In the continuous method, what happens is we are applying the particles at the same when the part is magnetizing. So the particles are applied at the same time when we are uh, magnetizing the part. In the residual magnetization method, the particles are applied after the part is magnetized. And the particles are attracted by the residual magnetism which the component has. And in dusting, what we do is we take the powder and we dust it over the surface. And we remove the excess powder by gentle blowing. So now we have we have the particles arranged in particular manner. These magnetic particles will go where the cracks are present or where the discontinuities are present and they will outline themselves according to the discontinuity or the defects or the flaw. And now the fifth step comes of inspection. So we will be able to inspect the defects, the cracks, the flaws using uh, these magnetic particles. So these magnetic particles will tell us where the cracks or flaws or defects are actually present. And this we can do in a well illuminated area. And also we can use uh, the fluorescent material or we can coat the magnetic particles with the fluorescent materials if we want to do inspection under UV light. So when we do this, what happens is the powders which are coated with fluorescent materials will glow in UV light and we will be able to see where the defects are actually present. Now, once the inspection is done, we cannot put the component back to its working condition. We need to demagnetize because if we do not demagnetize, it may hamper the performance of the material. So demagnetization is nothing but the removal of magnetic field or magnetization of test specimen. There are two ways by which we can demagnetize a component. One is heating. When we do heating, what happens is there are uh, we are promoting atomic vibrations. And since these atomic vibrations are very high, it will lead to random orientation of magnetic dipoles. The magnetic dipoles were aligned when we were doing magnetization. And uh, when, we, when we heat it, those, those aligned magnetic dipoles will start to go randomly and we will get magnetic dipoles in a random orientation. The other method of demagnetization is field reversal. Here what we do is we apply field in the opposite direction and this leads to misalignment of magnetic dipoles. So whatever method is convenient, if there are small parts, then we can always go for heating. Heating is best suitable for us in uh, most of the ways. But if there are large components, then we have to go for field reversal because we cannot heat the component to a temperature where uh, we can get randomly oriented magnetic domains. So for small for small materials, uh, heating is uh, preferred and for larger components, field reversal is preferred. So this is the basics of magnetization. We covered the six steps. First was surface cleaning. Second was magnetization. Third was checking whether the magnetic field we are applying is good enough or not. Fourth is applying the particles. Fifth was inspection and sixth was demagnetization. So this is how we perform magnetic particle testing in ferromagnetic materials. These are my references. And in the next video, I will be talking on a next new method of non-destructive testing called eddy current testing. Thank you. And if you have any suggestions on which I could make a video, please let me know on the comment section. I will be happy to make the video of the viewer's choice. Thank you.